I'm Hank Hutchinson, orthopedic trauma surgeon from Tallahassee, Florida, and today I'll be presenting a case of ankle fracture revision done using the Fibulock and Tightrope XP. This is a 48-year-old female who was in Colorado and sustained a Weber C fibula fracture with syndesmotic injury and was treated there by a fellowship-trained foot and ankle surgeon. She presented to my office six weeks post-op uh, for follow-up and hoping to begin weight-bearing at that point. I had not seen this uh, particular implant before as this was early after its introduction to market. I was able to get the op report and ordered a CT scan to confirm malreduction. This is the CT scan that shows malreduction of the syndesmosis and failure of the implant. It appears that it has come loose and is no longer maintaining appropriate reduction of the syndesmosis. With malreduction of the syndesmosis, there's a significant increase wear on the tibio tailor joint, significant increase in the probability of syndesmotic arthritis, and can be long-term ankle instability. Intraoperatively, this case was not fun. It was pretty much a pain. I elected to remove the plate because I suspected a fibular malreduction based on preoperative x-rays. Uh, once the plate was removed, I used the Fibulink removal kit that had been supplied by the manufacturer. Uh, in my hands, I was not able to get it to work. Um, I tried multiple times and the technique is described as being able to remove the tibial insert uh, through the lateral side and I could not get this to work. I was able to use a screwdriver and pound it through the tibia and remove it from the medial side of the tibia through a separate incision, which was less than ideal. Once this was done, I was able to clean out the syndesmosis with a laminar spreader to remove all the scar tissue and everything else that would be in the way to prevent an accurate reduction. I was able to anatomically reduce the fibula and place the fibulock nail. Once the fibulock nail was placed, I was able to anatomically reduce the syndesmosis under direct visualization and deploy the two tightrope XPs to secure the reduction. This is a C-arm shot that shows our immediate post-operative results with an anatomic reduction of the ankle mortis, appropriate placement of the fibulock nail, and the two tightropes. The two tightropes are at the level of syndesmosis and approximately one centimeter proximal to the joint surface as well. At six weeks, she was doing well. Her ankle mortis is well reduced. Her wounds had all healed. She had minimal swelling and was progressing well with PT. She had been working actively on range of motion in her fracture boot and was happy with her results at this point. Here she is at three months. She's currently walking without assistive devices. She has active dorsiflexion to 15 degrees and good plantar flexion. She's got abundant callus formation. You can see secondary bone healing on these x-rays, which is something you don't see with plate and screw constructs on the fibula and she and I are both happy with these results thus far. Postoperatively for this patient, she was non-weight bearing for a total of six weeks. Two weeks once her sutures were removed, she was placed immediately into a fracture boot and allowed to begin range of motion on her own at home. At six weeks, she was started with formal physical therapy and made weight bearing as tolerated in the boot for two weeks. And at eight weeks postoperatively, she was allowed to come out of the boot and begin formal physical therapy. Thank you for watching this presentation. I hope it helps you in the future if you have any similar cases.